What is up guys, my name is Lex. The clip you guys are watching right now is actually the intro to my very first poker vlog that I made February 15th of 2021, just about a year and a half ago. A ton of things have changed over the last year and a half. I've created over 120 poker videos for this channel. I feel like I've gotten better at my editing, voiceover, speaking to the camera. Hopefully my poker skills have gotten better over that last year and a half as well. And I came up with an idea recently. I decided to compile all the biggest hands I've ever played here on the vlog and put them in one full video for you guys. Some of you new subscribers may have missed some big pots that I played over a year ago. And I'm gonna show you guys those hands right now. So I hope you guys enjoy it. The biggest pots I've ever played in my entire life. Let's get started. With about 30 minutes left in our session, we pick up ace-king offsuit in the big blind. The cutoff makes it 25. The button, kind of a tilted player, older man makes it 100. We four bet to $400, and the button ends up making the call. So going heads up here to an $850 pot. Flop comes out, ace, jack, deuce, two hearts. Good flop for us. Top pair, top kicker. We do not have a heart in our hand. We are losing to a hand like pocket jacks and ace jack, which is definitely hands that he would three bet and call a four bet with. So kind of concerning there. We have to decide, should we bet small? Should we bet big? Or should we check? Trying to induce a bluff from this tilted player. I decide to check. When I check it over to him, he instantly goes all in for $2,000. So not really expecting that. If he has queens and kings, he wouldn't be doing that. If he had ace-jack, I don't think he'd be doing that either. So I think he either has a flush draw or ace-queen. I ask for a count. It's around $2,100. I put in the call. Not going to fold here in a four-bet pot with top pair, top kicker. With almost $5,000 in the middle, my heart is racing here. Hopefully we can hold up. Turn card, three of clubs, river, seven of hearts. Flush draw gets there. My opponent does not want to show his hand, so I just show ace, king, top pair, top kicker. The button looks at my hand, looks back at his, and mucks. We have him covered, so we end up stacking this guy right at the end of the night. Pretty awesome. Big, massive pot here to finish up. All right, guys, fasten your seatbelts for this one because it's going to get big. We have ace, king. There's an undergun straddle to 10. Two limpers for 10. We make it 60 in the cutoff. The straddler calls and the first limper calls. I have a love-hate relationship with ace, king, but it's pretty hard not to love a flop of queen, jack, 10. We flop the nuts straight, the best hand possible, and it gets better. The straddler leads out for $80. Now the first limper goes into the tank. We look back at our suits to see which one we have. We do have the ace of diamonds, which is good for us, meaning if a diamond hits on the turn, we'll still have the nut flush draw. The limper now calls $80. Now we have to decide, should we just call, try to put in the trap, or should we raise it up here on this board with the nut straight? Raising it up here sounds like the best play. We make it 275. We unblock all the value hands our opponents can have. They can have two pair, queen jack, queen 10, pocket jacks, pocket 10s, pocket queens, king 9, 8, 9, all these hands that we can get value from. And given the fact that the straddler was playing pretty tight and we're super deep, I'm going to try to raise this one up, build a big pot here. Straddler thinks for about 20 seconds, makes the call, and the limper folds. So going heads up here to the turn. Pretty interesting line here by the straddler, leading out for 80, then calling our 275 raise. I put him on a super strong hand. I don't think he has pocket queens. I think he would three bed that preflop. I also don't think he has ace king. He would three bed that as well. So I don't think we're chopping. But given his line, I think he has a really strong hand like pocket jacks, pocket tens, or a king nine suited for a worse straight. So whenever he checks it over to us and when we see these seven of spades on the turn, we're going to bet and we're going to bet big. We settle on $500, about 60% pot here. Our opponent thinks, looks at our stack, looks back at his stack, slides in a stack of greens here to call. So things are looking great for us. I'm putting him on a very strong hand, like I said before. So we're looking for a brick river so we can pile in even more money. The dealer collects the bets and puts out the river. Six of spades. We still have the best hand possible. What a beautiful run out for us. The straddler checks it over to me, and I do something I don't normally do. I start to Hollywood. I put on a little act here. I kind of act like, should I bet? Should I check back? I want him to think I'm contemplating maybe bluffing big on the river. I go into the tank, put on my best acting skills for about a minute, and settle on a bet of $1,250, trying to cooler this guy to the max if he has a straight or a set. I said this before and I'll say it again, the best feeling in poker is when you have the nuts, the best hand possible, and you can put in a big bet, putting your opponent to the test, knowing that you're going to get all those chips back, the ones in the middle, and hopefully more from a stack. After 30 seconds, he puts in the call. We show Ace King to scoop almost a $4,200 pot here. Biggest pot we've won all month and definitely the biggest pot we've won here in Texas. Flopping the nuts and getting three streets of value. Running good here in Dallas so far.
We have pocket queens here. Under the gun race is $275. Next to act makes it $225. Now we have to decide, should we cold four bet pocket queens or should we just call? Given the fact that it's an under the gun open and an under the gun plus one three bet, I decide to just call here and try to play in position against these guys. Now the action is on the low jack player and he decides 225 is not enough. How about 625? That's right, this guy puts in a cold 4 bet from an under the gun and an under the gun plus 1 3 bet. This is just such a wild spot here with pocket queens. The low jack player is an older gentleman, not from this country, definitely here for fun and playing for recreation. So whenever he 4 bets here, he basically has two hands, kings and aces. The last two hours, I've never seen this guy get out of line, and he doesn't look like the kind of player that would be putting in any crazy plays with like ace-five suited or ace-queen offsuit, so I can assume that his range is super tight here. Under the gun plus one, who three bet initially, calls 625, so now we only have to call $400 more to potentially win a almost $2,000 pot, plus we still have over $3,000 to play with, so I put in the call for 625, we're going to the flop in a 4 bet pot here with pocket queens. With over $1,900 in the middle here, we see a flop of king, 10, queen. We end up flopping a set here, I'm so excited that a little urine comes out of me, I have to contain myself, it checks to me, I check to the initial 4 better, who then goes all in. He shoves all in for $3,600. The first player folds. We snap call here. Ask him if he wants to run it once or twice. You want to go once or twice? Yeah. One time. One time. All in with around $9,000 in the middle. With a set, the turn is a three. The river's a king. We make a full house. We show our pocket queens for a boat. Our opponent looks visibly frustrated and shows pocket aces. So we got super lucky against him. He ended up going all in on the flop. We snapped him off. Rivering a full house here. Winning the biggest pot of my life. This is the biggest pot I've ever played and the biggest pot I've ever won. The adrenaline is kicking in. My hands are shaking here. I'm pretty nervous. I'm trying not to knock over my chips as the dealer counts them. Over $9,000 being shipped our way. This is a crazy moment here. Taking a shot at 1025, flopping a set and stacking our opponent. Can't get much better than that. win some small insignificant pots here we have a stack of about three thousand five hundred dollars we end up switching seats so we can get a better view of the table and we get into a pretty crazy hand here we are playing 5 10 25 mandatory straddle under the gun there's three limps to me i over limp king 10 offsuit on the button and the straddler check so going five ways to the flop of king five nine with two spades we look back down we have the ten of spades a big action player who limped under the gun now puts out a bet of $125 with my top pair. Backdoor straight draw and flush draw. I make the call for $125 and everybody else folds. I found it pretty interesting that this player limped under the gun. He loves to raise. He's super aggressive and super action. The turn card is the 10 of hearts, giving us top two pair now. And he continues to bet. He bets $400. So now I think he might have a hand like pocket aces. He limped under the gun, trying to limp re-raise, but it limped all the way around. Now he's got an overpair and he decides, I'm going to bet big here. He could also have a suited connecting cards with a flush draw like 7-8 of spades or 8-9 of spades. He could possibly have king 5 or king 9 or even 9-10. So given the fact that I turned top 2 pair, he bets $400. I'm going to raise here. I have about $3,400 behind and he covers me. So I end up cutting out a pretty sizable raise. I make it $950 here with top 2 pair. Now the action's back on the under the gun player, and to give some context here, he's literally everyone's favorite player, if you know what I mean. He has an unlimited bankroll, loves to play multiple days a week, and will keep rebuying at any time. He now decides he's going to raise it up. He makes it $3,400, basically putting me all in here. Given the fact that I have top two pair, this is a dream spot, right? Well, not really. I mean, I'm still super deep with this guy. He could have a straight with queen jack, that's possible. He could have a set like pocket fives or pocket nines. I think he would raise pocket nines preflop. I don't think he has pocket tens or pocket kings. I look back at my stack and I still have about $1,500 or more remaining. Against most players given this action, I would probably hero fold top two pair, but there's just no way I can fold to this guy. He could have a hand like king five, nine, ten, king nine, all two pairs that we're beating that he'd be doing this with. He could even have aces that he's doing this with or ace king. He could have a huge straight draw or flush draw. So I put in the money here, not going to fold my top two pair against this guy. The pot is now ballooned up over $7,000.
a huge pot brewing here. I ask him once or twice. He says one time. The dealer puts out the Ace of Hearts on the river. Pretty terrible card. And I'll let you guys hear the outcome. I have two pair. Under the gun action player shows pocket fives for a flop set. And we have top two pair that's not going to beat him. We get massively coolered here by this guy. I don't think I can ever fold to him. Like I said, I might be able to hear a fold this to some other, other players, but definitely not him. We end up losing about $3,500 in that pot. So gotten too much action yet so far, but that is about to change. Right when we look down at black pocket aces, we raised to $30 in middle position. There's two late position callers before the small blind, a pretty action player who's been getting in a lot of pots, three bets us to $180. It's always a beautiful spot when someone three bets you and you're in position with the best hand possible, pocket aces. We're gonna put in a four bet here, but we have to decide what sizing should we go. We decide to go around 2.5X plus a little bit more because of the callers in late position. I put in a four bet to $510. The players next to act end up folding pretty quickly and now the action's back on the small blind. He thinks for a while here and it looks like he might be contemplating a five bet, which would be amazing. He started the hand with around $5,000 and I cover him. But eventually, after tanking for about a minute, he decides to make the call. We are going to the flop in a 4-bet pot with pocket aces here with around $1,100 in the middle, which comes out queen, queen, nine, rainbow. The small blind checks it over to me, and I think most of the time here I should be betting around one-third or a little bit smaller on this board, trying to get called by pocket pairs or even ace high, but there's really not many turn cards I'm too unhappy with seeing. It's a pretty dry board, so I decide to put in the check here. I don't think I can get three streets of value in a four-bet pot on this board, and if I check back the flop, maybe he'll think I'm weak and he might start bluffing into me on the turn and the river. So I check back the flop, and we're going to the turn, which is an offsuit four. So now I'm hoping he might bet a hand like pocket 10s or pocket jacks. I'll call and the river's a brick and he'll check to me and maybe I'll make a big bet and he'll call me with 10s, jacks, or kings. So he ends up betting out here $600. So I'm going to stick with the plan. I decide to make the call for $600. No reason to raise after we check back the flop. With $2,300 in the middle, we're going to the river which pairs the board again. It's another 9. And I'm expecting the small blind to check to me a lot of the time. I'll put out a bet of maybe $800 or $1,000 and hopefully he'll call me with all pocket pairs and maybe even ace high. However, that doesn't happen. He doesn't check. He also doesn't bet half pot or even full pot. He puts out an over pot size bet here. He ends up sliding out 29 black chips for a bet of $2,900. Alright, this is definitely not how I was expecting this hand to go. I thought he was going to bet around $1,500 and I was going to snap call, but almost a $3,000 river bet is super polarized here. But he just can't have too many hands that's beating us. He can have quad queens, he can have quad nines, and he can maybe have a queen. But we double block ace queen, and I don't think he's three betting queen jack or queen 10 out of the small blind, and then calling a four bet out of position. So there's just not many hands we're losing to here. He could be turning ace high into a bluff trying to get us off a chop, or a king high into a bluff, so I decide after tanking a while, I'm going to put in the call, I want to see his cards, I put in three yellow chips to make the call, and he shows us the bad news, king queen of clubs for flopping trips, river in a full house, so he takes us for a massive pot here. The last hand I play on stream here, these guys are a straddle maniacs, the game is 5, 10, 20, 40 now, so I look down at ace queen of diamonds from under the gun plus 2, raise it up to $175. The action pretty quickly folds all the way to the small blind and John ends up putting in $175 with queen jack offsuit. Now the action's on DQ in the big blind. His cards aren't reading and I'm not even sure if he even knows what his cards are but he likes to put in money blind anyway so he makes the call for $175. Now the action's on Joe in the $40 straddle and he makes the call too. These players are definitely not afraid to play some big pots at the lodge. We see a flop of 10-5-3 with two diamonds, end up flopping the nut flush draw. When the action checks to me, I go back and forth of C betting or not, and given the fact that I am three ways, or actually four ways, and these players love to call, I decide to check this one back and try to realize some of my equity. The turn is pretty good for us. It's the queen of spades, now bringing two flush draws on the board, but now we have top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw. John... DQ and Joe check it to me, so I'm going to put out a bet for value here. I put out a $400 bet. The small blind John ends up making the call for $400, and now the action's on DQ. He's looking around, a little disinterested. I'm expecting him to fold a lot of the time here, but he ends up taking a look back at his cards, and he does something I wasn't really expecting. He puts in a raise to $2,500, five purple chips going in the middle. 
Right when I see this $2,500 raise, my stomach drops. I feel like I'm going to throw up the barbecue dinner I just had two hours before. You can see by the look on my face, I'm not too happy. I end up asking DQ, hey, do you know what your cards are? And he said, yes, I look this time. So now I have to decide what should I do here with my top pair, top kicker, and the nut flush draw. I've only been playing with DQ for about 4 hours now, but I haven't seen him get too out of line with many big bluffs. He loves to play a ton of hands, but I haven't seen him get caught with many big bluffs, so I think he has a pretty strong hand like 2 pair or a set. However, my hand is super strong here. I have $6,000 in my stack. If I make the call, I'll have $4,000 remaining. If I end up making my diamond flush on the river, I could probably get a full double up. I end up tanking for about a minute here and I decide to put in the call. I call $2,500 so we're going heads up here to the river. This pot is huge, over $6,000. I could really use a diamond one time. I'm praying to the poker gods, praying to the dealer. Come on, I need this money way more than DQ. I mean, look at that shirt. Who wears a shirt like that? Going to the river, which is the nine of clubs. What the f***? No diamond for us this time, ended up missing our nut flush draw, then DQ asks, how much do you have in your stack, can I see, I end up lifting up my arms to show I have about $4,000 remaining, I'm hoping this is just a posture play and he checks it over to me and I can check back, but that's not the case, he ends up putting out a huge, sizable bet of $3,500. My guess. So sick. And we may never know. We may if, if Lexo folds Lex, he here. He hates it. He hates it. Basically, almost puts them all in. 3.5 to go. Lexo has a smidge over that. Lexo needs a barf back. He's going to be in the blender here. A little summertime blender. 3.5. DQ with a smile. Poker and Chili's all in, baby. Folds it. 10-5. I told you. Ooh, I told you. Laser. 10 five. Laser reads, Rick. Good on you there. I just felt I agreed to the, on the two pair. I thought it was more of a queen. I end up folding my ace queen, and DQ shows 10-5 offsuit for two pair, which is going to win it. If it looks like I'm pretty frustrated here, it's because I am. I hate losing. I get on tilt super easily, especially when I'm up on a session, and then I end up losing my profit and ending up down. I'm always going to be real with you guys, I hate being fake, so if I am pissed off or frustrated, I'm going to show it. However, this has nothing to do with DQ's play. I love the fact that he's playing every single hand, he's great for the game, and he's also a super nice guy. I just hate losing. We have pocket threes in the small blind, and the action player from the hand before makes it $75. He's been losing a lot now. He's getting a little bit on tilt, kind of getting out of line, playing probably 80% of hands. I end up making the call for $75, and the straddler makes the call too. So going to the flop, three ways in a single raise pot, which comes out, king, jack, three, we flop, bottom set, I put in the check, the straddler checks, and now the initial raiser, the loose aggressive maniac, puts out a bet of $75. I could be raising, but then I'll just shut out all of his crazy bluff hands that he might want to barrel off with. So I make the call for $75 and the straddler folds. I'm looking to check raise big on almost all turn cards. So the dealer collects the chips, puts out the deuce, an offsuit deuce. The board is rainbow. Now I decide I'm going to check, putting in a big check raise whenever my opponent bets. However, he checks behind, which is not what we want to see. Going to the river, which is another deuce. So now we make threes full of deuces. I decide to lead out here for a small blocker size bet of $100. I'm hoping this will look like I have a weak hand like maybe a jack or a misdrawal or maybe a weak king. And my opponent, the loose aggressive maniac, will put in a raise and it looks like it's working. He puts out raising chips. He makes it $350. This is music to our ears. It looks like he took the bait. However, we did not come all the way up to the hard rock here to just call with a full house. We're going to have to put in another raise here with our full house. Three's full of deuces. Looks like we trapped him good. I think for a little bit of time, put in a little Hollywood and raise it up here to $1,350. My relationship with this player is pretty funny. He's about 50 years older than me. However, I talk to him just like I would a regular friend. I make jokes with him, give him shit all the time, and he gives me shit back. So we do have a pretty friendly relationship. However, this is war. I have a full house. I'm going for the maximum here. I'm hoping he has a hand like maybe ace deuce, or maybe he has got ace king, or possibly aces that he was trying to trap on the turn. Whatever he has, I'm hoping for a call or maybe even a shove. He thinks for about a minute and decides to go all in. I make the snap call and he shows us pocket kings. He's got kings full of deuces and I have threes full of deuces. He coolers us to the max here. 
full house over full house for a ten thousand dollar pot. Math. How'd you check the turn? Like you. Wow. How'd you check the turn? I told you jokes. Jesus Christ. The dealer counts out my chips and my opponent covers me, which means he's going to win a massive pot here. I end up losing over $5,000 in a huge cooler, full house under full house against a crazy maniac action player. I'm not going to rebuy. My mindset's not in the right place. I end up just heading out for the night. Seat number one, potentially the biggest 2-5 action player in Dallas makes it 25. A reg next to act makes it $100 and normally I would be folding ace-jack offsuit here but I want to get into pots with a big action player in position so I come in with a cold call, folds all the way back around to seat number one who makes the call as well. Before this hand started, seat number one had been folding a lot, so I asked my friend next to me, is this guy really action? He said, just wait. Sometimes he folds a lot, then he gets bored and completely explodes and goes crazy and punts off his entire stack, so I'm hoping that's one of these times when we end up flopping top pair in a three bet pot three ways. Seat number one checks, and now the reg puts out a tiny bet of $75. I don't think I have too much of a choice here. I do have the ace of diamonds backdoor nut flush draw. I don't think a raise is good here, so I decide to match his bet. I make a call for $75, and now the action is back on seat number one, who puts in a raise. He makes it $600. The other player immediately folds, which is good for us, and now the action is back on me. I have about $4,500 in my stack, and seat number one covers me. We could be playing a massive pot here. He check raises me to $600, and now I have a decision. Should I call, should I re-raise, or should I fold? Against other players in this room, I would just pitch my ace jack, but against this particular player, a wild action player, I have heard some crazy things from this guy that he gets bored and just punts off his entire stack, so I don't think I can fold here with my top pair backdoor nut flush draw, so I make the call for $600. The dealer collects the chips and puts them into the middle of over a $1,500 pot going to the turn which is the five of diamonds now giving us top pair and the nut flush draw. Seat number one decides to go all in. He shoves all in for $5,000. Holy hell, this is a massive overbet here. I look back at my hand, I do have the ace of diamonds and his hand doesn't really make much sense. If he check raised the flop with a flush draw, would he just go all in here for over 2x pot? With a flush, if he had a set or two pair on the flop, would he really be shoving this turn card when the flush came in? This is a wild spot. I go deep into the tank. I think back about an hour ago where this particular player in seat number one flopped the nut straight on a super wet and connected board. He check called the flop, check called the turn, and then check shoved the river. So he slow played the nuts. So now I'm thinking if he's fast playing this hand, what is he representing here? It just doesn't really make much sense. I am deep into the tank here, leaning more towards a fold, but then I think back to myself, can I really be folding this hand? I have top pair and the nut flush draw against a crazy wild action player. There's been stories of this guy losing over $10,000, punting off his entire stack. The transfer list for this table is over 10 players long. Everybody wants to play here. I'm in the spot. I've been waiting for this spot all night. Been waiting for a spot like this all trip to get it all in versus a crazy Texas player. So I decide to make the call. Ready? Once or twice? What do you got? Nice. Good hand. Nice. I hope you guys are ready for a crazy first hand. Texas card house, 5, 10, 20. We have pocket fours. There's an under the gun raise to 50. We make the call. The button puts in a three bet. He makes it $200. The big blind cold calls $200. Initial raiser folds. And given this price, I am pretty deep with both players. I make the call as well. The button is not a professional player, so I feel like when he three bets here to $200, he has jacks, queens, kings, and aces. So when the flop comes out, three, five, four, two diamonds, we flop a set. My heart rate immediately jacks up. My adrenaline is pumping. I check it over to the button who puts out a bet. He makes it big, $400. The button has over $6,000 in a stack. Whenever he c-bets $400 on this board, I'm pretty sure he has an overpair, which is amazing because we flopped a sneaky set of fours. The big blind actually calls $400, which is even better. If the big blind folded, I might be tempted to slow play my pocket fours here, but with the big blind calling, I am definitely going to be putting in a raise. 
I feel like I have both of my opponents crushed here, so I don't want to go too big to let them hero fold some of their pairs, so I decide on around a 4x raise here. I make it $1,500, and now the action is back on the button. Button only thinks for about 10 seconds and decides to go all in for over $6,000. The big blind then goes into the tank. Looks like he's got a tough decision here. He cold called a 3-bet, so I expect him to have some over pairs here. Maybe some 9s, 10s, possibly some ace, x of diamonds hands that he's thinking about. I'm actually rooting for the big blind to fold. I don't really want him to call it off here with maybe an ace X of diamonds hand that has a lot of equity. He thinks for a while over a minute and decides to let his hand go. We obviously make the snap call. When the button three bets pre-flop and shoves all in on this flop, I put him on aces, kings, ace X of diamonds or king X of diamonds. So we're looking to fade an ace, a deuce, a king or a diamond. Heads up here, all in for over $8,000 in the middle. Let's see if we can hold. Wow, what a chance. What do you have? Oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Dude, <I'm not. laughs> Jesus Christ. What a turn. We get one of the worst possible turn cards, the Ace of Diamonds. If my opponent had a flush draw or aces, he got there. I was not feeling good about the situation until he showed pocket kings. We are good. We're going to be doubling up here, winning over an $8,000 pot. I used a little foreshadowing here with seat number four going all in with a stone cold bluff of Jack High. He is going to be the main villain in this hand. When he raises it up to $60 under the gun, there's two callers. I have ace jack suited on the button. I think I could be three betting here, but given the fact that I am last to act, I decide to just make the call. Right after I call $60, another player at the table asks seat number four, did he really mean to raise to $60? Given the fact that there's no straddle on, he end up raising 6x. He then told us that he thought there was a straddle and that it was a misclick. So I kind of have to keep that in mind here. It's a little odd, but we end up going four ways to the flop of jack, four, deuce, two diamonds. We end up flopping top pair, top kicker. Initial raiser, seat number four checks. The cutoff player, who was the active player who totally owned us, 7-8 offsuit, our second hand of the night, bets $100. I think I could be raising here with my top pair, top kicker, but this time I decide to make the call, and the action is over on the initial raiser, seat number four, who decides to put in a check raise. He re-raises here to $375. The action does fold back over to me on the button. I have top pair top kicker against a pretty active aggressive player who just bluffed about an hour ago. So I don't think I can fold my top pair top kicker here, but I'm trying to think of what hands he could be doing this with. He can have some over pairs like queens, kings, and aces. He could possibly have the last combination of pocket jacks. I don't expect him to ever have a hand like jack four suited or jack deuce suited given the fact that he raised under the gun to $60. I don't really expect him to have pocket fours or pocket deuces here. I don't think he's going to be raising under the gun in a tough nine-handed game with those small pocket pairs. So I put him on an over pair or possibly a big combo draw like ace five of diamonds or ace three of diamonds for a gut shot and the nut flush draw. So I'm not going to fold my jack just yet. I want to see a turn. I end up making the call. I'm not accusing this guy of angling, but I have seen in the past players raising huge from early position with hands like aces and kings and then pretending like they misclick to underrep their hands. So it's definitely a possibility he can have aces and kings here with a monster going to the turn, which is the seven of clubs. Now bringing two flush draws and my opponent in seat number four does not slow down. He continues to bet here and he bets big $850. This is a super tricky spot here. My opponent check raised to flop and then bet $850 on the turn. Against a very tight player, I would just be making the fold here. But against this player, I feel like he can be bluffing here. Semi-bluffing with hands like ace-king of diamonds, ace-five of diamonds, ace-three of diamonds. If I put him on a big combo draw, that means that if I call the turn, I basically have to call off any river that isn't a diamond or possibly an overcard like a queen or a king. So I make the decision now that I'm going to call the turn and then call off on any non-scare card river. A massive pot is brewing here, almost $3,000. My adrenaline is pumping. My heart is beating through my chest, going to the river, which is the Jack of Hearts giving us trips. One of the best cards in the deck, the front door flush misses, and now we improve to beat hands like queens, kings, and aces. Finally, after being down over $2,000, we make a big hand. The action is now on seat number four. <laughs> That's so nasty. Wow. wow. Oh, that's 
That's pretty sick, man. Cool. I pulled it each jack too, by the way. You want to say? Yeah. Hey, you on the floor. Seat number four goes all in for $3,200 on the river. We make the snap call with our trips with an ace kicker, and he shows us the bad news. Pocket fours for a full house. And the blinds are at $5, $10 with a $25 straddle, a $50 double straddle, and a $100 triple straddle. It folds to me, and I look down at the Angels. American Airlines pocket aces. I make it $350 with the best hand you can ever get pre-flop. Let's play a massive pot here. The $100 straddle makes the call. JC is very aggressive at any time. He could put you all in for your entire stack. So we could potentially be playing over a $20,000 pot here with pocket aces. We see a board of queen, eight, deuce, two diamonds. On this flop, JC checks it over to me and I put out a bet of $350. JC matches my bet. So we're going to the turn, which is another eight pairing the board. This card is actually going to be better for JC's range than it's going to be for mine. I'm not going to be raising too many 8x holdings to $350, but he's going to have a ton of 8x hands that he's going to call with preflop and call with on the flop. So I actually contemplate maybe checking this one back against a very capable player who could be putting me in a super tough spot being very deep stack. However, that doesn't happen. He decides to lead out for $450 on this turn card. With all that being said, this lead is a little bit worrisome given the fact that he can have trips and I really can't, but the sizing is kind of interesting. He only leads for $450. I feel like if he did have trips here, he'd be betting a lot bigger. So I actually put him on a lot of queen X holdings, queen 10, queen jack, and king queen. In position against a player who is not afraid to put in a ton of money as a bluff, I think the best play here is just make the call, which is what I decide to do. So with $2,400 in the middle, we're going to the last card, which is the four of clubs. On this river card, I'm thinking to myself, if JC leads out for a pot size or over pot size bet, I will just make the call, but he decides to bet one fifth the size of the pot. One purple chip, $500. This bet sizing on the river is very, very odd. I feel like he's super unbalanced here. I don't think he's ever using this $500 bet sizing with a bluff just because I'm just going to call with all of my pocket pairs, which makes me think he has a queen X holding that he's trying to get me to call with all of my pocket jacks, tens, and nines. If this hand happened last week when I wasn't playing my best and I was making mistakes and my confidence level was very low, I might just flick in the call for $500, but today before the session I told myself I have to battle with these guys, I can't let the high stakes get to me, I have to go with my gut, I have to try to play the best poker I possibly can, I feel like I have the best hand, so I'm going to raise for value, going to put in one of the biggest bets I've ever done in my career. I raise to $2,700. Right after I make this raise, JC keeps a stoic figure and looks over at my stack just to see how much I'm playing, which obviously is a little worrisome. He might be contemplating a raise all in, but as time goes on, you can see he puts his hand on his head, which definitely looks like he's contemplating a call or a fold. I'm confident that I have the best hand now, so I am rooting for a call. So far on my Texas trip, I have not been doing good. I've been running bad. I've been playing bad, making mistakes, losing massive pots, getting coolered and bad beat. So it is finally our turn to win a big pot. JC goes into the tank for what seems like forever. Over two minutes of thinking, and ultimately he decides to put in the call. Mm, that's really a call. Sure down. How about that? Aces and eights of the queen. Shows the aces. Finally, we win a big one here in Texas, $7,800 in the middle being shipped over to us. Stack has now risen to over $16,000 at a 2-5 game just two hours into our session. The action player adds on for another $5,000. There is so much money on this table, so much action. We're straddling to $15 to $25 preflop, so the game has been bumped. Nobody wants to fold. Everybody wants to play a big pot. It is getting wild. At 11.53 p.m., there's a $25 straddle under the gun. There is three callers, and I'm in the big blind with pocket kings. I raise it up here to $200. The straddler calls and all of the limpers call. So we go five ways to a $1,000 pot, which comes out nine, four, deuce, two spades. Going five ways to the flop at a position with a huge overpair is a recipe for disaster, especially when you're super deep. So I decide to check on this board for some pot control and the action checks all the way around. The turn is an eight and I'm just going to try to check here, get to showdown. It checks all the way to the cutoff 
who puts out a bet. He makes it $500, and this guy had been playing pretty solid all night. I don't really like this spot. I think he could have turned a set, maybe two pair, but it is possible he could be semi-bluffing here with maybe Jack-10 for a straight draw. Maybe he's just betting a hand like Ace-8 or 7-8 for protection, given the fact that everybody checked to him twice. Facing a $500 half pot size bet, I definitely cannot fold my hand the way I played it, but I'm not really liking this spot. This player has been playing solid the entire night, so I feel like he's going to have a pretty strong hand here. I make the call, and the hijack player makes the call for $500 as well, with only $200 left in his stack. Playing another massive pot here, over $2,500 in the middle. The dealer collects the chips and puts out the river card, which is the king of clubs. We make top set the nuts, the best hand possible. I decide to lead out small here for $700. With such a strong hand on the river, I don't want to let the action check all the way around. So I bet out small here and now the cutoff goes into the tank. He thinks for a while with about $6,000 left in his stack. He reaches for some calling chips and then reaches for some raising chips and puts in more money. He puts in a raise to $2,200. When my opponent raises on this river, he's representing the nuts, and I thought I had the nuts with top set, so I immediately get sick to my stomach that I must have misread the board. There must be some odd straight that got there, or maybe a backdoor flush, so I study the board for a while, trying to see is there any hand that beats me. After about 30 seconds of squinting and going over all the possible combinations, I come to the fact that no, I have the nuts, Pocket Kings is the best possible hand you can have here. My heart rate starts to settle down knowing that I am always going to be winning this pot. I glance over at the cutoff stack with a little less than $4,000 left. I'm almost positive he has a set of nines or a set of eights, so I'm going to be going for the max here, and I rip it all in for $10,000, covering my opponent. The cutoff looks visibly frustrated. However, he puts in the call. I show Pocket Kings for top set, and he shows Pocket Eights for a set as well set over set for the biggest pot i've ever played in my entire life with all the money in on the river the pot was almost fifteen thousand dollars which is just insane just about three years ago i was playing two or three hundred dollar pots at one two and now we just won the biggest pot of our life fifteen thousand dollars being shipped our way $25 straddle folds all the way to the big blind who raises it big to $250. I have ace jack offsuit next to act. Given the fact that there is a player behind me, I don't want to be in the middle of both of these players in a large straddle pot. So I put in a three bet to $650. Back over to the big blind who thinks for a little bit of time and makes the call. One of the reasons I drove four hours up to Jacksonville is to play some big pots on a live stream. And it looks like this one might be one of them. Over $1,300 in the middle. Heads up, we see a jack 7-7 seven seven board. We flop top pair, top kicker. The big blind checks and I feel super confident with my hand. Top pair, top kicker, backdoor nut flush draw. I should be ahead here probably 99% of the time. We can assume that he never has over pairs like queens, kings, or aces because this aggressive opponent would be four betting that preflop. He shouldn't have many sevens in his range other than six seven suited, pocket sevens, and maybe eight seven suited. So I bet $500 looking to get value from his gut shots, his flush draws, his pocket pairs underneath the jack, and maybe even ace high. Or a weird spot. Lex bets 500, 100, and uh, Hunter rips it. Oh, Lex snap it in there. Wow, Lex snapped it in. It looks like we're only running it once. Oh, Hunter out. Whoa, Hunter gets there. Gross, gross, gross. The big blind just raises to $5,000 and on this board with top pair, top kicker and a $50 straddle, three bet pot, there's no way I'm ever folding. I make the snap call and unfortunately he hits a king on the turn and this ends up being the biggest pot I've ever lost in my entire life. But we don't have to wait long to get into a better spot. The very next hand, we're in the small blind and look down at two black jacks. The hijack raises to 120 and now the button puts in a three bet to 360. Facing an open and a three bet with pocket jacks, the fourth best hand you can get pre-flop. I'm not going to be calling here. I put in a cold four bet myself. I make it $1,000. I have $4,000 left in my stack and the hijack folds. The button with $20,000 in a stack decides to put me all in. I make this snap call. No way I'm folding pocket jacks for only $5,000. We decide to run out the board two times. 
My opponent tells me he's got ace king. The first board comes out jack high, giving us top set. The second board comes out queen high. All we have to do is fade an ace or a king to win a massive pot, and we do. The river's a deuce. Pocket jacks hold to win a $10,400 pot. My adrenaline is pumping, but I'm trying to keep my composure together. This table is full of professionals. I don't want them to know that this is one of the biggest pots I've really ever played in my life. I took a shot at this big game just a couple days ago and lost over $6,000. So now to come back and hold in a massive flip to have over a $10,000 stack, it feels pretty damn good. Note to self, Rogue doesn't like to be held while I'm filming him, so he wanted to jump around. He's fine though, over there, chilling out. But that is it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. A compilation of the biggest pots I've ever played in my entire life. We won some huge pots and lost some huge pots as well. Honestly, a really fun vlog to make. It was really cool to go back in time a year ago or even more than a year ago and see how I did things, see how I edited, how I did the voiceovers, how I played hands, and to be honest, uh, it was all pretty bad. I did a pretty bad job at editing voiceovers and I made some huge mistakes in the past, but that's how you learn. It's good to go back, learn from your mistakes, and I feel like I have gotten better at all aspects, making videos, speaking to the camera, and hopefully, I've gotten better at playing poker as well, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. We have another video coming out on Friday, which is gonna be brand new content here at the Hard Rock, playing 510 No Limit, but that is it for this one. Till next time, I'll see ya.